In this chapter, we will talk about entities in Medusa. So, entities are actually a representation of tables in a database. An example of it would be order table. Also, I want to mention that Medusa uses object relational mapping to create an abstraction between database and an application. So, let's create an example. I would create a new entity called supplier and link it to the product. We can do that by creating a new supplier file in the models and creating a new class called supplier and also apply the entity decorator to it. We also should inherit a base entity class to add ID created at and updated at default values. We also have an option to inherit from self deletable entity to enable self deletion on this table and not completely remove record from the database. Self deletable entity inherits from base entity, so it also add ID created at and updated at columns. Let's add some fields to the supplier. It would be name and contact person. Contact person could be nullable, so I would add nullable true to the column decorator. Depending on your case, you can add different relationships, but in my case, it would be one to many. And also, I want to create a relationship between product. Here, we're again in error because product does not have a property supplier. So we should actually extend a product model and add supply property to it. We can do that by creating a new product model, but keep in mind product model already exists in Medusa. So we should inherit our product with Medusa product model. Let's import product model from Medusa.js Medusa package. Let's add entity decorator and create a new product class. And now we would have a conflict because we have two products in the same file. So let's change import to Medusa product to resolve conflict. And here you can see we have all of the Medusa fields in Medusa product class. For one to many relationship, we should define a relationship on both sides using type RAM. We can do this by adding many to one decorator. We should also add a join column property to change a pivot column supplier ID to be snake case and not camel case, which is by default that type RAM creates. And now I can add index to the supplier ID column to speed up query performance. Now, if we go back to the supplier file, we would still see the supplier error. So to resolve it, we can just change the product import to local. We could also add a definition TypeScript file using index.dts and override class properties of the product. Overriding is actually preferable because these models are also used in the services and so if you want to use services and have the right properties in the models, you should override it. Now we can test it and import product from Medusa package because it would reference the types definition file. Once we created an entity, we should create a migration to it. We can do it using npx type RAM migration create command. And also we should provide a directory where to put this migration. We should create a new table called supplier. And also we should alter the table product and add column supplier ID to create a one to many relationship between supplier and the product. For ID, I'm using character varying. Also do character varying type for every text column.
Also here I add primary key constraint and ID. Here I change product table and add new column supplier ID. Let's differentiate these queries and put them in a separate query runner .query functions. And also here I added a new constraint FK supplier that references the table supplier in the product table. As we have prepared uh, new migrations, we provide them in an the app function. And so we should also provide a revert migration in case we want to revert the migrations. And we can do this by putting the queries in the down body. To reflect the changes in the migrations directory, we should build the backend. And now we can run the migrations via npx medusa migrations run command. And here we are getting the migration event successful. We could also revert migrations, and we can do this by running npx medusa migrations revert. I will run migrations again. Also worth to mention that we could add a prefix to the new created records in the database. In this example, I'm adding supplier prefix to the supplier entity. You can do this by creating before insert method and adding before insert decorator to this method and also utilizing generate entity ID function from Medusa GS slash Medusa package. Now, as we created a new entity, we should also create a repository. But before doing that, I want to actually explain why do we need repositories in the first place. So repositories provide us with the helper generic methods of an entity, like listing, retrieving records from the table, and for example, counting. We could also provide our own methods in repositories, like here in the my function example, like we can do some fancy stuff with the query builder and retrieve some records. Here, when we access supplier repository, we could see a uh, generic helper methods like create, soft delete, soft remove, find one, another. As we extended a product entity, which is the entity that is defined already in a Medusa.js, we should also create a product repository and extend this product repository from Medusa product repository. It would look the same as creating a new repository, except the fact that we should use extend function and assign uh, methods of Medusa product repository in our new product repository. Now let's import the default Medusa product repository and change the import name from product repository to Medusa product repository. And just like this, we can assign a methods of Medusa product repository to our new product repository. Also, we can define our own methods in our new repository. And also let's not forget about default exporting of this repository. Now let's test it and see how it works. So I'll use our new product repository to list products and also I will include the supplier relation to retrieve a supplier in products. We can utilize dependency container to retrieve product repository. I will also add a generic parameter to have a typing right and also make sure you add type of because product repository is not a type. Now let's use a find method in product repository and also let's not forget about adding supplier relation. 
Now let's start the backend. And now if we go to the Postman and hit that endpoint, it will get the products with the suppliers, which is currently null. Let's update our custom endpoint and insert a new created supplier in the product. For this case, we can utilize product repository update method and pass supplier ID as a string, but we do not actually have a supplier ID. So in order to retrieve it, we should create a new supplier. To create a new record in the database, we could use supplier repository and let's just get it from the dependency container using supplier repository string. Let's also pass type of supplier repository as a generic to have the typings right of this particular supplier repository. Now let's create a new instance of supplier. We can do that by using supplier repository create methods. Create function does not really persist the instance to the database, but simply returns a new object of the entity type. In our case, it also adds an ID property to the instance, as we define it in before insert function in the entity. We can store a supplier record in the database using safe method, and also let's update the product with new supplier ID. Also, let's list uh, updated versions of products. We also add the supplier relations to it to get the suppliers. You will send a request to the store custom endpoint. You will get a new supplier instance with the name that we defined and also with the contact person that we defined. Let's switch to the native Medusa endpoint store products and try to see suppliers. As we can see here, we do not have a supplier property on our products. Medusa also provides expand parameter. It specifies related entities to include in a response. And also Medusa provides fields parameter that specifies which fields of the entity includes in a response. Let's just pass supplier as a relation and ID as a field to return. And as we can see, we have request field supplier is not valid. And that's because the supplier has not been added to the allowed relations of this endpoint. If we would go to the list products endpoint in Medusa repository and check the endpoint, we would see that it has the allowed relations property attached to it. Besides allowed relations, we also have default relations, default fields and allowed fields. So if we would not pass fields as a parameter into the endpoint, it would use the default fields property. And the same goes for the expand parameter. If we would not pass it, it would use default relations. If you would scroll down, we would see that all of that variables defined in the same file. So we need to somehow change the allowed relations in order to add supplier to the expand parameter in the endpoint. Besides that, I also want to make supplier as a default relation to not pass expand parameter anymore. We can do that by creating a new loader in Medusa. Let's create a new loader called extends or product fields and export as a default a new function. Let's just call the same extends or product fields. Let's retrieve that store product endpoints file that I have shown you in a GitHub repository of Medusa and assign it to the property. We can use import function and pass the path of Medusa store product endpoints. TypeScript will hint us what properties do we have in that file. And as you can see here, we have a load store product relations. Now let's mutate it and add supplier string to it. Also let's do the same with the default relations. Let's run yarn dev to spin up server. Now let's remove fields and just leave store slash products. And now we can see the supplier in the product response. Let's also test the expand parameter. Let's just add supplier to it. And also let's add fields with the ID. 
and now we can see the ID and the supplier in the product response. Let's create a new service called supplier. We can do that by creating a new file supplier in the services directory. Let's just copy all of the necessary things from the onboarding service. And also let's change the injected dependency and add supplier repository to it. Also make sure you use relative paths instead of absolute to not have any import errors on build. Here we just change the naming from the onboarding repository to supplier repository and also change the type. Let's remove all of the unnecessary methods in our new class and let's create a new custom method to list and count suppliers. The new method would have list and count name and as a first parameter of this method it would be an object whose keys are the attributes of the supplier. In our case it would be ID, name, contact person, created at and updated at attributes. Let's utilize selector type from Medusa.js Medusa package and as a generic parameter pass the entity. Also here I forgot to change the service name, so let's fix it. At the second parameter of this method would be the config that is related to the pagination, like skip and take. Also let's utilize find config type from Medusa.js Medusa package. Let's add the supplier repository to the active manager and also assign it to the supplier repo variable. And also let's create a query and utilize build query helper from Medusa.js Medusa in order to merge the selector and config and create a query to insert it in the find and count method of the supplier repository. Now let's test it in the now let's test it in the store custom endpoint. Let's just comment out the logic that we have had previously. And now let's assign a supplier service from the dependency container. And also let's pass the generic. Do not forget about the absolute pass. Now let's call our new created method called list and counts. And as you can see, as a first parameter, it takes the selector attributes like ID, name, contact person that we can filter by. As a second parameter, we have object that has pagination related attributes like skip and take. Also we have an order attribute, also relations, and also the select that is representation of fields. Let's change products variable to the suppliers. And also let's make list and count method parameters optional. We can just add an object as a default. Now we can test the response by hitting store custom endpoint.